is a breakdown of a cobweb tool I made in Houdini. First of all, I wanted to say that I actually got my initial inspiration from this tutorial from Tim J Design. I initially started experimenting with Substance Designer, but I wasn't really getting the look that I wanted. Then I found Tim's video, and it was much more of the style of cobweb that I was after. So you can find a link to Tim's video in the description below. Now I'll go over how I made these cobweb shapes. Each cobweb starts with a base shape. Here I'm using two grids to create a corner and then feeding it into two tools that I made. One to generate some cobweb lines and then a second one to run a vellum simulation. The vellum simulation allows the cobwebs to hang and drape a bit more naturally. Inside the first tool I have my input which are my two grids and then I have a scatter node within a for each. This scatters a few points on each of the grids, scattering three points, and I promoted some of these parameters to the tool. Adjusting the relax iterations and the scale radii helps distribute the points evenly. I then have a connect adjacent pieces node, and that draws a line between each of my points, and that forms the base shape of my web. I then have two graphs, one that creates a tangled, messy cobweb, and then another that creates a clean, more uniform web. First of all, I have a resample node. This divides the lines into more segments and gives me more points along the lines. I then have an attribute randomize. This generates a random p scale attribute on each one of the points. And then I have this squashed sphere, which I'm copying to each of the points. The random p scale attribute randomly scales each of the spheres so that the shape is less uniform. I then have another scatter node which scatters points on the surface of the spheres and then another connect adjacent pieces node which connects those points with lines. I've turned down the search radius and the max search points so that not all points are connected. I then have a resample node again to create more points along the lines and then I'm using a fuse node to fuse some of those points together. And now the web looks a little less geometric. And now I can smooth the lines so they look a little more natural. I then have a distance from geometry node. The second input are my two grid planes. And this node measures the distance from the surface of the grids. Now I can use that attribute as a mask to drive an attribute blur. So in the weight attribute on the attribute blur, I am referencing that mask attribute. And so now as I adjust the blur, I'm able to relax the position of any points that are furthest away from the surface. So that completes the first part of the pop web. And I felt like it had lost a bit of the shape. So I created a second layer that was a bit simpler and more uniform. I start with my base web shape. I have a resample node to create more points along the lines and then a fuse node to fuse some of the points together. I then have a ray node and the ray projects the points onto my second input which are my two grid planes. And then I've adjusted the scale so that I'm not projecting the points all the way onto the surface, only part of the way. And then I have another distance from geometry node. Again, this is creating a mask attribute, which I then use inside an attribute blur, which smooths out that sharp corner in my curve. And then I finally have another fuse and smooth node just to roughen up the shape slightly. And then the two webs are merged together. And that concludes the cobweb generator tool. So if we move on to look at my second tool, so this gently drapes the cobwebs by running a vellum simulation. So if I uncheck freeze and press play in the timeline, you can see the vellum simulation running. I only run the simulation for a few frames, but I thought it helped make the cobweb look a little more natural. I have two inputs. The first is my cobweb. The second are my two planes. And then I have a distance from geometry node, again, to output a mask 
which measures the distance from the surface of the geometry. And then I'm using that mask attribute to group any points that are close to the surface of the geometry. So any points that have the mask attribute less than 0.01 are added to the group. And then I'm using that pin group inside my vellum cloth configuration node. And any of these points that are pinned won't move when the simulation is ran. And then finally, I have my vellum drape node, which runs the vellum simulation. So if I uncheck freeze and press play, you can see the effects of the simulation. I've exposed a few of the parameters. I've increased the velocity dampening to remove some of the bounce from the simulation. And then with these two tools, I was able to create a few different variations. And this is a quick look at the different cobweb shapes that I made. So for some of them, I just kept the settings the same. I just changed the position of the input geometry so I could create some cobwebs that were hanging down or were a bit more messy. And for the last one, I actually used a circle to create a shape that was a bit different from the others. I then merged the cobwebs together. But if I zoom in, you can still see I've got some sharp corners. So I did one final resample and I switched treat polygons as to interpolating curves. And so you can see it just smoothed out some of those sharp corners. And then I fused the points together before using a poly wire to convert the lines to geometry. And then these are now ready to be exported as an FBX. I then brought them into Substance Painter where I baked them to a flat plane and used some basic materials and smart masks to quickly texture them. And if anyone wants to take a closer look, I've put the um, Houdini file on my ArtStation store. So follow the link in the description um, if you want to have a look. Thanks for watching and I hope you find it useful.